These are lovely speakers. You know how we did the review of the ELAC Unify reference? Mm-hmm. And we said that it was a really good all-rounder for the price. Mm-hmm. And for a beginner like audiophile, you mm-hmm. can't go wrong with those speakers. Yeah. This kind of takes that speaker. Like it, 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 it's similar in a way, but it's better in every single aspect. Okay, so one thing that I have to mention is that we changed the DAC from the um, Kitsune Hollow Audio May DAC May. to the Dana Phillips Terminator Plus. Um, it made a huge difference. Overkill. <laughs> yeah, it is complete overkill with the system. Yeah. I was just talking about that, saying, you know, the whole system overall yeah. was like perfect. Like I wouldn't change a single thing yeah. except the DAC. This is just overkill. Like no reasonable person would hook up <laughs> that preamp, amplifier, and speaker with this, what, $6,000 DAC almost? Yeah. It 6, makes 6,400 I think US yeah that makes zero sense yeah no I agree um, the only reason I changed it to the Terminator Plus uh, you know when I switched it over from the Hollow Audio the only reason I did that is because the Hollow Audio is just way too it was just taking a smooth yeah, it was... yeah it's way too smooth mm-hmm. way too smooth the high frequency and immediately when I changed it to the Terminator Plus what happened it, it had some extension some air frequency and it became a little bit more livelier without any sort of sibilance. Like I was just jamming out. Yeah. So would you say I know what I what I'm what I'm doing? No, he doesn't know. No, 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 no. So you wanna hook up that KLH? I honestly look at these speakers and I don't think I'm gonna be impressed because it's just. Hey, why do you say me, that? It reminds me of all those vintage speakers that you bring in, right? <laughs> that, and I, oh, I just oh, assume wait. it to sound like a vintage speaker, a little you know, very mid-range centric, a little bloated bass, and then the treble might be a bit too much for me. That's just my experience with these box speakers. Well, you know what? You're gonna be surprised. Will I? Will I really? This is a speaker that you cannot come to hate. So you know how you used to, you know, make me force listen to like vintage speakers. Force listen to? What are you making me? I mean, you know, you kidnapped me, put me in a room what? and we're like, Tujin, listen to this. What? And yeah, it sounded great. Um, this is a speaker where you can listen to a lot of different genres of music and it'll sound good. It's forgiving, but it still has like all the, you know, the modern stuff, like the modern hi-fi sound integrated into it. It's like a love child with vintage and modern hi-fi. So were you wrong? Um, I still think it's kind of ugly, but it kind of shows that, you know, you take a good speaker, you get some good drivers, you know, you put it in a box and, you know, work some magic and somehow you can get some really good sound. So why don't you do that? I, I can't, huh? honestly. Huh? It's like, it's so simple, but so amazing at the same time. Except it's ugly. I, I'm, I'm, it's still ugly. What were your thoughts, Jay? I knew they were good. I knew that they were good. But rehearing them, I feel almost angry at Doug. <laughs> oh, snap. Dude, it's actually. So I was thinking this, and th- these are stuff that I f- often forget. That's why I wanted to do that like, like, vlog type in between mm-hmm. my actual, uh, like, you know, reviews, or whatever, impressions. Okay. But my thought the thought that came to my mind was that the tone is so freaking good and you know like when tone is good when i start going like oh shit it's so good yeah oh, I shit, know. it's so good i keep saying it i said it with the sonos fibers i said it with the totems mm-hmm. and i was thinking to my in my head like which where does this fall in line because the sonos fibers tone is good mm-hmm. and so is the totems mm-hmm. but it's not the same I, I mentioned this before it's not the same type of tone this I would say is closer to the totem tone, but it's not as um, accurate, I would say. Okay. It's almost like a little bit of that uh, Sonos Fiber goodiness, like cheating. Okay. But like just a little bit less than the Sonos Fiber. Okay. Which makes it like, man, I was saying earlier, like, Sonos fibers, I would get these uh-huh. if they weren't this looking. Yeah, I mean, they're but not- honestly, with this sound, I, I, I. 
right off the bat, I like the speakers. You said the price was two thousand five hundred, right? Yep, for the gloss black finish. Okay, so for two thousand five hundred dollars, I think the sound is there. Mm -hmm. First thing I noticed is the sound stage is comparable to the KLH. Okay. Which I absolutely love. The sound stage on that speaker is fantastic. So this is comparable. Imaging is really, really good. The high frequency extension is also very, very good. But there's one thing that I really can't put my finger on it that takes away from its musicality. And I just don't know exactly what it is just yet because it's my first impression, obviously. But one thing that I can say is that when it comes to the bass, you know those like tracks that has like those boom, 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 like doop. I have no idea what the heck that's supposed to mean. Like, so for example, like when I play, um, okay, so Deja Vu Affair by Sophie Tucker. Okay. Soft Animals. Mm -hmm. Great track. I used to play this track all the time. Like this goes way back. So like when, when I say boo 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 boo, I mean like the bass, bass punch. Okay. So when bass punch hits and not just this track where like every other track that I tried, I can distinctively hear the woofer. Like I can distinctively hear like it's coming from the woofer, and it's like a, there's a, like a loose decay. You know what I'm saying? Like like to me, it it, it reminds like a, me of like a home theater subwoofer, like that ported effect. Yeah, it, the, the, don't get me wrong. The bass extension again on this speaker is fantastic, but I hear like after those bass punches, and I'm not talking about. The overall bass, like when I hear an entire track that extends down low, mm -hmm. the lower frequencies, I don't hear it. And that was what I was just testing. But on those distinctive track, like the one I just said, right, uh, Sophie Tucker, when there's actually a bass punch, like, right, mm -hmm. I hear like a, like I hear like a, like a woofer like decay. Like you hear the decay, yeah. I hear the decay, and that bothers me because that now I can de definitely hear that it's coming from the woofer. Mm hmm. So I don't know that that's what it bothers me, but again, I don't know what is exactly bothering me. Something in the mid range is also bothering me. Okay, so it didn't take long for us to find out what the problem was, but at least with the bass. Mm -hmm. um, so you it was... call it a problem, I say it's personality. Okay, uh, okay. Personally, I don't like it. The the p -p -p sound mm -hmm. turns out it's the port noise. Yeah. Yeah. When there's a bass note that is at a higher volume with a fast attack, yeah. like, you know, a lot of punch, mm -hmm. you'll hear the port, like the air move out of the port. Yeah. And Jay picks that up and he hears it as it's unnatural. Which like, like, well, it like I said, when it blends with the um, rest of the frequencies, when mm -hmm. we play a track that has like low frequency all across the board, mm -hmm. then yeah, there's still, you know, chuffing. Right, but the air is moving moving out, mm -hmm. but that noise is blended in with the rest of the frequencies really well. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't hear it. But when there's a distinctive punch, like a you know bass punch, then there's like, poof, poof, and then I hear the, poof, like I hear the, poof, like, like that decay is so unnatural to me, and it throws me off. I think any bass head would like it. I and think I mean, so. And I, I know why you don't like it because it reminds you of my the, the subwoofers in my car. <laughs> Your car subs? Because they're no, boring. these are they're way boring. better than that. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, it's it's kind of a similar kind of uh, thing. Um, it at, like you know when I first heard it, right? Yeah. I was like, you know what? It, it reminds me of like a a home theater kind of sub kind of thing. Yeah, you really like it. I, I was jamming out. I mean, it didn't bug me that much. For Jay, he was just like, ah, oh, ah, oh, it hurts. What, it, what oh, is that? Like, what is that? But to me, I'm, I'm, not I'm, I'm, I'm jamming out. Like, besides that, overall as a speaker, oh, yeah. impression was, oh, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Still about that mid-range, I don't know what it is. But I think that there's, may there's be... There's a slight something That may be it. also a pairing. Mm -hmm. um, who knows? I mean, but yeah, initial impressions, right? Just initial impressions. But, um, yeah. Okay, um, that was very humbling, to say the least. Shit, I can't. Hold up, I can't. <laughs> we, we were just fucking laughing in the background. Like, yeah, like we, we put it to the test. Like, we played tracks that we knew. We knew tracks that were very dynamic, you know, and this is a fair... I need you to say, were you wrong? 
I, I was wrong. Dude, I, he shat on these speakers, right? He's like, I heard them at Best Buy. I heard them in a retail environment. I was like, what are these guys talking about? You know, such great speakers for hi-fi, I mean. Okay, so build quality, 100%. It's like 200 something dollars, even less. You like know, 100 build, bucks, build really. Build quality is like mediocre at best. Mm -hmm. But the sound, what I just heard there, was fucking like you sorry i swore but <laughs> you 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 play you were like okay i'm, I'm looking for any artifact yeah like any kind of artifact and, and thing you you played like a track and yeah. then it hit and then i was like we were both hysterically laughing yeah because it it did it like flawlessly like it it had extension too like it wasn't like it has bass extension an actual bass extension mid-range yeah. is smooth and you know what yeah. fucked me up is at tone yeah yeah Dude, it gave me goosebumps because I'm looking at the price. I'm like, holy. Okay, to be fair though, mm -hmm. uh, Panda Camera, so why, why are you holding the camera? Are you that weak? I'm very weak. Okay, but okay. We gave it no excuse to be um, like, we gave it full advantage. Meaning yeah. like, you know, we have like. Really high end really high, back, high electronics. End back, electronics are all high end. It, it clearly scales. It clearly freaking scales. Like, hella a lot. Yeah. Now, when I review these, I'm going to definitely use something comparable in the price range mm -hmm. to, um, you know, see what's up. But, dude, if if it, if it sounds like anything like what I, we just heard, yeah, with a budget integrated or a receiver, it's it's a go-to. I don't, I will be fucked up. That's, That's how like, good this is. Yeah. What the hell? And I didn't. We did not expect this. We were. I, I was ready to shit on these because Tujin said it was shit. You know what? I'm wrong. He was like, I'm, buy these. Totally I bought these with my own money, by the way. I'm yeah. not returning them. Yeah. This guy was like, these are terrible. You should review them. Everyone's saying it's good. You know, you should give your take on it. I mean, here's the thing. When people say stuff that comes off a little shilly or like unbelievable, like, yeah. you know, everyone's kind of guilty of oh, this it. This is literally fucking unbelievable. This is unbelievable. Like, yeah. No filter. I can't even unswear. Because this, this is literally, out of all the things that I've heard, the most impressive. Because this, how, how much is this? I mean, it's like 200 bucks, but like, I think Sean said it was on sale for, for like $79? 100. Yeah. Fuck that shit. Is I would just hoard those. I would just <laughs> buy it. Dude, whoever, the Sony engineer that did this, he's a goddamn a genius. Raise. He's a genius. They need a freaking raise yeah. for this guy. The yeah. GR research said they sell like a what, $400 crossover, crossover or something? Yeah. It's fucking worth it. I what? would fucking buy it. Yeah. I'm buying it. Okay. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, I, would, okay. I would put better finish on these for sure mm -hmm. like the finish the, you know when you look at it like i said the build quality is shit yeah but like the sound is like what the yeah yeah it's a fucking unicorn it's, it's very humbling because we were we were doing initial impressions on various speakers from the other, much who, who, higher price who, points who, who reviewed it like we were just listening to 2500 dollars psps yeah i prefer the tone on these and then psps uh <laughs> I, 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 fuck fuck no filter yeah Sorry for swearing so much, but who else reviewed this? Cheap Audio Man. Cheap Audio Man. I mean... Andrew Robinson? I'm not sure. Uh, Sean? Anyways. It, all, it's all just the, a popular speaker that's kind of been around for a while. Like all the reviewers that review this out there, they're, they're, they, didn't, they didn't hype this. this. They undersold it, if anything. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. actually freaking amazing. Like the, the ability for it to fucking scale this much? Honestly, it's like, I think if, you know, after the final review, you know, oh, after doing pairing... Frequency. Yeah, the it wasn't. High frequency fucking has refinement. Yeah, it wasn't fatiguing or it didn't distort. Although there, like you know, there was that one. one there was song. a little bit of like a uh, background noise yeah. compared to the higher end speakers mm -hmm. that was noticeable. Mm -hmm. But like honestly, it didn't take away from the musicality. It's so, honestly an incredible speaker to turn friends into audio. I don't care if you have like you know three thousand, five thousand dollars speakers or ten thousand dollars speakers. I will still have, own one of these. Because the, the way these image is like really good because they're mini monitors. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was quite the experience. They start looking to look better. Okay, so that was a lot. We listened to a lot of speakers for initial impressions. Again, it's just initial impressions. Mm -hmm. um, but let's end this off with a speaker that you found most interesting, the most surprising, and with... Uh, something that you would take home, something that you found the best, that's something you would buy with your own money. Okay. Um, you I start. Okay, so the most surprising for me personally was the KLH and the Sony. I, but pick, especially pick the Sony. One. It, one, it was one. honestly the Sony. I mean, okay. our, our reaction was priceless. Okay. It just blew me away. 
Okay, so Sony. Okay, yeah. How about the speaker the speaker that, that I would actually take home is more either the PSB or the Bucart S400 Mark II, mm-hmm. and it would honestly be the S400 Mark II. Um, as I said, it was just a really pleasing sound overall. I can't find any real faults. Tujin can't take instructions because I said only one, and he just keeps choosing two. I, I put him in different echelons, you know, because. All right, all right. So for me, the most exciting was hands down the Sony. Like I did not expect that. Um, it was actually shocking. Like we were both like hist- no joke, laughing hysterically ass- laughing yeah. and throwing the f bombs around because it was actually shocking. Yeah. Like that's the most shock I've had with stereo in a long time. <laughs> Like it was, it was not even funny. It was, it was very shocking. So, and the speaker that I would take home is honestly the KLH. Yes, the Sony has good tone and for the price, right? But at the end of the day, I would 100% pick the KLH because of the tone, because of the overall presentation. Um, like Sony is good, but KLH is clearly a better speaker, obviously, mm-hmm. considering the price point. Um, but uh, again, like, will I be able to live with Sony's? Right? No, you no, wouldn't. No, it's just very impressive. Mm-hmm. The sound stage is not there like the KLH or the other high-end speakers. Um, but you know what? It was very, ex- it was very, very impressive. And it's very humbling. It was very humbling. I mean, yes, we put in like you know very good components and electronics with it um, to give it like no compromise. Yeah, know? there was no handicap. No time. handicap. Um, but if it sounds you know half decent with the AV receiver and you know or an in, in, inexpensive yeah. integrated amplifier, honestly, like, that just goes to show you don't need to spend a lot of money to have great sound. Like, I'm really humbled by the Sony speaker. Yeah. And also baffled. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of scary. Anyways, that's pretty much it from us, and um, hope you guys enjoyed this initial little teaser for the rest of the review and the full story. Stay tuned. Stay tuned.